Hello, Rick Off here. Welcome to video number 19 of Rick's Pipe Dream Magnetic Motor Generator Project Series. Now a lot of people have been saying, or suggesting anyway, that the only way that I can accomplish rotation is by moving the stator. And they, they've been saying that it's um, the movement of the wheel is entirely due to the hand motions that I'm imparting on the stator. Well, this just isn't so. This is a, a false assumption, and I'll show you exactly why right now. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to use the stator in a locked position stationary stator with the north pole of the stator over the bike wheel rim. And I'm going to start at the um, tail end of a north facing group. Uh, so of course there's going to be repulsion there, right? Uh, I can go right out to the end of the group and, there, and there's, there's no strong repulsion that's going to move it either way. But if I go just slightly past the end of the group, that's where I, I'm going to hit the repulsion and the wheel's going to want to move to the right. Now you watch. Uh, watch what happens. I'm, I'm at point number four right now under the stator. And as the repulsion moves the, uh, the north group further along, uh, I'm starting up from a dead stop. The, uh, I'm not spinning the wheel by any motion of my hand. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring my fingers off the wheel in this direction, say, which would ordinarily tend to make the wheel move that direction. Say. Now you watch what happens. Okay, see that? Now I came all the way around, all the way through the south group. I started back here, point number four, and I came all the way around to point one, 90 degrees. And then I continued and went uh, all the way up to the north facing group. Uh, so I actually went through a 135 degree area of the wheel. Now I ask you, was there anything that I did that caused the wheel to turn? The only thing that I did that caused it to turn was to place the wheel in a position at a dead stop And I even went past a dead stop to turn the wheel this way with my hand when I took my hand off. And yet, the magnetic forces at work propelled the wheel ahead 135 degrees. So I, I had nothing at all to do with the motion of the, uh, the wheel, the rotor absolutely nothing. It was all done by magnetic interactions of the, between the stator magnet and the rotor magnets. And so you see, this, is, uh, this should blow all the theories away that somehow I am supplying all the motive force because of the movement of my hand. The only thing I'm moving is the stator magnet. And the only reason I'm moving the stator magnet is to switch poles uh, so that I can have the poles align at the, at the most advantageous time uh, to achieve the effects that I want. And uh, it's very easy to move this stator, very easy to move it. There's no problem involved. You see? Now, of course, I did hit that brick wall when it 
finally came around to the north, but that's only because I have a stationary stator. If I'd uh, been in the moving stator mode, here's what would happen. I would start off at that north point, the same as I did just a minute ago, and we'd go into motion. You see that? At that point, when I get to the number one point, I would um, swing the stator so that the south of the stator uh, repels the south magnet group. Now watch how I do that. Repel. Move. 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 Move, move, move. One, two, three, four. 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 And I'm spinning fast enough now that everything's a blur and I can't even see the uh, markings that I've made on the wheel. But I think you can see what's happening here. When I started out slow, you need to rewind uh, the playback and watch what happens as I start out slowly. Um, I'm only moving at the uh, four points. That's the only time I move. The rest of the time the stator is stationary for all intents and purposes. And yet I'm deriving all the benefit of those eight accelerative points while I'm only moving the stator four times during each rotation. Now I'd also like to show you one more thing. Let me bring the uh, north back into position, the north of the stator. Bring it back into position over the wheel, and let me just slow the wheel down a little bit. Yeah. Now the wheel has momentum. You see, when it's spinning, it has momentum, and it's able to get past these uh, magnet groups, even in stationary mode, where it would ordinarily reach a sticky point or a repulsive point that would tend to stop rotation. It is uh, being affected by those points right now. There's no question about that. But with, uh, with the speed of the movement giving us inertia and the weight of the flywheel adding to that to give us uh, further inertial momentum, we're able to, uh, to go past those sticky and repulsive points that, uh, that are trying to stop rotation. And when we get going even slower than this, watch what happens. You can see that when the south group comes along, like here, it, it's propelled forward. When a north group comes along, we slow down. At the tail end of a north group, we speed up again from the repulsion effect and speed up at this front end of the south group. Now see how we're slowing down? Speed up, speed up, slow down, slow down. And that's probably going to be about it. So the point here is that inertia is a very good thing. It's helping us to make things work even better. Now I hope the demonstrations in videos 18 and 19 have been instructive to you and that they've been enlightening and helped you to understand exactly the forces that are being employed here and how they're used to advantage. And I think you'll understand then the power of these methods. Thank you.